Okay. So Ryan has taken the bus home, but Brad has joined them, and they have Ralph with them, and they've taken them back to the hotel lobby. And they've just taken some. Brad has just taken something out of his pocket. Wow! Breathed Ryan. A laser XL7, just like you said. And Brad set a miniature sports car on the floor and pushed it carefully through the highest part of the arch at the bottom of the clock. The car was low enough, if maneuvered by a skillful driver, skillful driver to slip through. See that, Ralph? Ralph had seen it right. The sleek, mouse-sized car with wire-spoke wheels and knockoff hubcaps was painted silvery gray, the right color whizzing unnoticed through the shadows. The broad, thick tires would stand up to the rough surface of the carpets and make a wide splash through puddles. The doors didn't open, but the windows were big enough for a nimble mouse to climb through. And after all, real race car drivers didn't open their doors. They climbed through the window, too. Ralph was squeakless at the sight of such a beautiful sports car. Why, with a car like that, he'd no longer have to hang onto his tail and keep it from getting caught in the spokes. He could just hop in and take off. Come on, let's see you drive it. Ryan set Ralph down next to the little Laser XL7. Could he drive it? Oh boy, he'd show them. Ralph slipped through the window into a bucket seat, made sure his tail was safely inside, grabbed the wheel, took a deep breath, and went. The car did not move. Some noisy skiers came in from outside, but paid no attention to the two boys kneeling as they walked across the lobby. The boys crouched behind the couch until they had gone. Silly, said Ryan. That's your old motorcycle noise. You've got to make a sports car noise to make a sports car move. Silly me, admitted Ralph who had been too excited to think straight. He took another deep breath, made his voice as low as a squeaky voice could go, and went, Vroom! Vroom! The Laser XL7 sports car began to roll across the floor. Ralph was driving. He was actually driving this beautiful sports car. He drove it straight into the leg of a couch where it stopped. Vroom! Ralph roomed again. The car did not budge. Matt, who had joined the boys to watch, asked, uh, How's that little fella going to go back in reverse? How's he going to back up? Silence. No one had thought of this problem. Ryan's mom came out of the elevator. Hello, Ryan, she said with a smile. Is this your new friend? Yeah, this is Brad, answered Ryan, with his hand covering the top of the XL7 so his mom would not see Ralph. Hi, Brad was unexpectedly shy. I'm glad you could come home with Ryan, said Mrs. Bramble. What are you boys doing? Oh, playing with a little toy car, said Ryan. Play quietly, said Miss Bramble, and if the manager appears, you'd better go out to our cottage, or maybe you could show Brad around. He might like to see the kitchen. With that advice, she went off to make sure the maids had cleaned the ground floor bedrooms properly. Brad sat back on his heel. Your mom sure is nice, he said. Yeah, agreed Ryan, thinking about Ralph's problem. Vroom, vroom, vroom. Ralph made a noise like a racing motor, but the car did not move. Huh, what we need now is your dad's tow truck, remarked Ryan. Ralph was annoyed by the boys laughing. I know. 
said Brad. If going vroom makes the car go forward, maybe saying vroom backwards would make it back up. Morv. Morv. Ryan tried out the sound. It's hard to say, but if it works, that's okay. Back in a car is slower than going forward. Hey, Ralph, give it a try. Morv, Ralph said. The car inched away from the leg of the couch. Morv. The car moved backwards. The car was free. Vroom! Ralph drove it off in a wide circle and came back to his friends. Do I get to keep it? He asked. It's all yours, said Brad, to make up for your broken motorcycle. Don't you need it? Asked Ralph, unable to believe anyone would give away such a car. Not anymore. Not since I have bike motocross starting up. Ralph was speechless with joy. He ran his paw lovingly over the dashboard of his very own car. Oh, wait till your relatives see you riding around in a Laser XL7, remarked old Matt. Ralph leaned out of the driver's window. What, what do you mean? I thought they all moved back upstairs. Most of them did, said Matt. But a few of your outdoor relatives still hang around, hoping you'll bring that motorcycle back. <sighs> Just my luck. The rowdy bunch. There was someone. There was the sound of someone stamping snow off of boots at the entrance of the inn. Matt quickly returned to his chair by the front door, while Ralph quickly and skillfully drove his car under the grandfather clock. The boots turned out to belong not to a guest, but to a man delivering the Cucaracha Voice newspaper. He shoved the papers into a rack and hurried out. Matt removed the top copy, put on his reading glasses, and read the headline. Then, something at the bottom of the front page caught his eye. Hey, Jake. You boys know Miss Heidi Kuchenbacher down at Sneed Elementary School? He asked. Yeah. That's our teacher. The two boys rushed over to Matt to see what the newspaper said about Miss K. Ralph climbed out of his car. He found that bits of his old nest still remained under the clock. With a shred of Kleenex, he began with loving care to polish away the boy's fingerprints from the sports car. As he polished, he listened while Matt read aloud from the newspaper. Retraction! It says here, it, it says here above the picture, said Matt. What's a retraction? said Matt Brad. Well, explained Matt, it means they take back something they said. Well, they should said Brad. Hey, look, said Ryan. There's the picture of our class. What else does it say? Matt read. The editors of the Cucaracha Village Voice regret a misleading story published in Saturday's edition concerning Miss Heidi Kuchenbacher's class at the Irwin J. Sneed Elementary School. Matt stopped polishing the car. Maybe the newspaper would say something about him. Matt continued reading. After thorough investigation, Superintendent Clyde R. Crossman has cleared Sneed of charges of mouse infestation. Miss Kuchenbacher's students have informed the editor that the mouse exhibited in her classroom was not captured as reported, but was instead a pet of Ryan Bramble, a member of the class. Ralph was insulted. He was no one's pet, not Ralph's, not Ryan's, not anyone's. Hey, Ryan, you got your name in the newspaper, 
Brad was excited for his friend. Wait, there's more, said Matt. Miss Kuchenbacher reports that she and her class learn much from having a mouse in the classroom. How about that, thought Ralph. I guess I taught them a thing or two. Matt read on. The editors regret any embarrassment caused Room 5 by the misleading article about their art activities. Well, that's better, said Brad. Well, it sounds as if maybe that editor is having a little fun, remarked Matt. No, he isn't, Ryan was serious. We really did write letters to the paper, said Brad, and the superintendent really did investigate mice at our schools. Well, sort of. I guess we took care of that editor, said Ryan. Come on, Brad, let's go see if the cook will give us something to eat. And that is where we're going to stop this section. See you soon.